Hi everybody, it's Franny from Hiding Franny's Garage and today we're troubleshooting electrical gremlins, this time on the 993. The problem with the car is that I've got a parasitic draw that's running the battery down over the week. So I want to run through a couple of different methods that we can use to sort of hunt these problems down. And there are different methods for different years of cars. So the older cars, when you turn them off, and they're pretty much off. I mean, there's just nothing else. Like the 356, just when you when you get that thing off, there's no draw on the battery whatsoever. And as cars progress through the years, um, up until about 96, at the switch over from uh, OBD1 to OBD2, even the computers and things sort of shut down in these older cars. So you can pull the negative battery terminal, put an ammeter on it, and you can start pulling fuses and wait for your ammeter to change. That's one way to do it. On the modern cars, so if you've got an um, OBD2 car, so maybe 96 and, and uh, newer, those cars have so many computer modules in them, you can, you can disconnect some of the power to one of the modules and then another module wakes up because it's like, oh my gosh, I lost power to my, my, my friend just died. And so they kind of all freak out and you end up chasing things around in a circle. So I want to show you a way to keep the battery terminal hooked up, but still check your current through each one of the fuses to see if whatever it is is pulling power. So we're going to start, since this car is an older car, we're going to start with the older method. I'm going to go ahead and pull the negative terminal off the battery and hook the ammeter up to it and we'll see what kind of current we're drawing just as the car's just sitting here right now. Now before we get started I want to just get a condition check on the battery itself. The problem in this car has run the battery down a couple of times, pretty low actually, so I'm a little worried about it anyways, but I want to get just make sure that the battery's okay, so I'm going to use my fancy dancy solar checker that I used in the last episode for changing the battery in the 996, and I'm going to go ahead and just check to see the condition of this battery. Okay, so like last time, pretty simple, we just hook up the negative terminal, and then hook up our positive terminal. There we go. Tells us our voltage is 12.6 or so, something like that, kind of going back and forth a little bit. We hit the enter, and this is SLI, which is what this is. Start, lights, and ignition, I believe is what it stands for. That's great, we'll hit enter, move on. Our cranking amps on this particular battery Let's see, our 910. So we hit enter again, and look at that, I've got it set to 910. So then we'll hit enter one more time, and it's reading cranking amps of 935. So that's even above the rated. With our cranking amps coming out on the meter even above the rating for the battery, I feel pretty good about the battery, so I think we can go on from here. Now once again, since this is an older car, it's easy enough just to disconnect the negative terminal on the battery. We always want to do this on the negative terminal and not on the positive terminal. So go ahead and pull that off. All right. Now the next thing we'll need is a multimeter set, on, uh, set up to measure current or amperes. So I'm using one of my smaller little volt ohm meters. I'm going to set it to DC amperes, 10 amps. So normally these sort of multimeters are designed for pretty darn low current. So you're gonna have to move your leads around a little bit. There's uh, an unswitched DC 10 amp uh, a receptacle for this and then use the one in the center which is common. Great. Now it doesn't really matter which way you hook this thing up, it's just going to give you a negative if it's flowing in the wrong direction and if that bothers you, you can just switch the leads. Now I've got a couple of very small little uh, wires with these teeny little uh, clips on the end of them. So one of our leads is going to go on the actual battery uh, connector here, the terminal. 
The other one's going to get hooked up to the negative terminal on the battery. I'm just going to use this clamp to hold it on. We're reading uh, 100 milliamps or 0.1 amp. So we definitely have a current pull, but it's awfully small. Now my guess is it's got something to do with the, uh, with the courtesy lights. I have my light unplugged, but still I'm still getting a bit of current. So let's figure out where that's coming from. Now to run down a parasitic drain in your car, you've got a couple of different methods you can use. Now since this is an older car and we've pulled the negative terminal and hooked up our ammeter to it, we could, in theory, just start pulling fuses. Now you can just sort of grab different fuses here, pull them out, and hope for a change. Obviously that one didn't do anything. Now to sort of emphasize this, I'll go ahead and hook the dome light back up so you can see when we make a real, a real difference. So here we have uh, almost an amp. It's 770 milliamps of current. So it's three quarters of an amp draw. So we just start pulling fuses. And there we go, dome light goes out. We can see our current go way down. So we know that that circuit was pulling quite a bit of power. Put this back in, we see it go back up. That'll give us a really good indication as to at least something, there may be multiple problems in the car, but at least that one is pulling power. All right, now another way you can do this, which is kind of interesting, if you've got uh, another meter, and let's say that, that you've got a newer car and you didn't want to pull the negative terminal and hook up the ammeter and such to it because you're just worried about uh, the computers and all that sort of stuff, then uh, there's a better way to check these things. On these fuses, on these flat fuses here, they have an exposed terminal on each side and you can actually check the voltage drop across those two terminals. Now you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute, they should have the same potential. They should, but they do have a little bit of resistance in there. So that gives it a little bit of an IR drop. And if there's enough current flowing through, we'll see it. We have to set our meter to be very sensitive. So I've got this set up to 200 millivolts, uh, DC millivolts. So we can check some of these other fuses here. This one, we get nothing. This one, we get nothing. Got no current flowing through that. Let's go back to our dome light fuse here. And look at that, 6.7 millivolts. The one above it, any power at all? Nothing that the meter can read. All right, so this is telling us that we've got current flowing through this fuse. So we didn't even need to read off of our ammeter, so we didn't need to disconnect our negative terminal on the battery. So that's another way, and you can go through all of your fuses. Now remember that the fuses in the car may not all exist in the fuse box. So in a lot of modern cars, they'll be in the cabin under the left kick panel or under the dash or something. But then there's gonna be other fuses around different systems in the car. There might be some in the engine bay. There could be in different places. So you wanna check your owner's manual and find out exactly where all your fuses are. One last step I suppose you could try as well. If you've gone through all your fuses, one of your relays might be stuck. And um, it may be going to a system that possibly isn't on a fuse. I mean, it's possible, I suppose. And you can start pulling your relays out one by one and then check to see. They just pull straight out. They're a little rough there. And then you can pull them out and you can check your system that way. All right, so back to this problem. We go ahead and remove this wire. We still have 100 milliamps of draw on the car, and we don't have a dome light on. I know the dome lights in the car are off, and I know the one in the trunk is off, because we also know that these lights pull a huge amount of current, right? They pull 700 milliamps, so, and we're only seeing 10, so it's not a light. So what could it be? Well, it took me a while to sort of figure it out. And what I did 
was I thought, well, maybe one of the pin switches in the door isn't quite letting loose because my dome light will stay on all the time now. So it's got to be something to do with the door switches or the switch on the boot or the bonnet here. And I checked the, the door switches, I pulled them out, I cleaned them really well and put them back in and it made no difference at all. Would not turn off the dome light. So I thought, well, okay, I'll check the one in the back then. And I had my ammeter on, and as I popped the boot, it, the ammeter went back up to 700 milliamps, which I expected for the light bulb that was back there. And when I closed it, it went back to 100. So that was working just fine. And then I was like, hmm, I wonder what it could be. And then I thought about, what about the latch for the bonnet here? Maybe that has something to do with it. So let's go ahead and trip the, the latch for the bonnet. We'll go ahead and push it down as though the trunk lid was pushing it down. And let's see what happens to our ammeter. All right, so this mechanism is actually pretty darn difficult to turn to push down. So I'm gonna use this and try and get this to pop down. There we go. Okay, and look at that. And look at our ammeter now. It's, it's reading 20 millivolts. So it was the switch, the micro switch, that's hooked up to the bonnet. Now I had the bonnet all the way down, but the micro switch just wasn't turning off the light. And you couldn't tell that underneath here with the bonnet down, you can't see this light at all. And it was on the whole time. So also this circuit will also trip the one in the dome light. So I double checked the dome light and sure enough, now it's off. So that was it. So you're gonna have to kind of be a little clever when you're going through all your electrics and looking for things. Start with all your fuses, uh, find all your fuses. If you, if you wanna pull them out one at a time and check your ammeter or check the voltage across them. And then that's the way you're gonna check all your fuses. And then if you can't find it then, start looking at your latches. That's, that's another thing, it's kind of strange, but there's usually timer circuits so that when you close your door, the light stays on for an additional, I don't know, 10 seconds or something. Same thing when you get out and close your door. Those timer circuits can, be, can charge up. There's a resistor in there and they can start to draw some power. So that's what was going on with this car. That switch was not working. The light was staying on and that's it. So look at our draw now. Now that draw probably is just from the clock or mostly. So our clock is, Fuse 12, go ahead and pull that out. Yep, look at that, we dropped another 10 milliamps just from the clock. All right, and then it comes back on again. So there's probably another 10 milliamps in the system, probably going to computer modules and things like that. We could run that down if we really wanted to, but I think uh, 10 milliamps is not going to run that battery down. And I think that's actually kind of the normal amount of draw for the car. Okay, so that's two different methods you can use to find a parasitic draw on your car. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you got any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get right to them. Thank you so, so much for watching and until next time, safe travels. Bye.